This is my homemade wood lathe that I made out of 4x4s recycled from old pallets and lumber. There's a DC motor down at the bottom. It's belt drive up to the, the headstock. Most of the parts that spin are 5 8 inch bolts. It's got a 36 inch bed and can spin work up to 22 inches in diameter. In the lower right, there's a motor speed control that I built, and there's details of that, including a schematic on my blog that can control the speed of the motor and the direction, so you can spin it the other way for sanding. Also, there's a adjustable uh, grinding and sanding table, and I can put grinding discs and sanding discs. There's one on the bed right now. I'll detail the headstock and uh, how the bolts and everything work in a minute. You can get details of all this stuff on my blog at Auto Belden, at Blogspot. One thing that this does need to be is uh, heavier. <laughs> uh, a lot of times when I'm spinning work, it's, if it's slightly off balance, it'll vibrate a lot, so I usually put sandbags or something on the bottom to hold it down and minimize the vibration. This is a detail of the headstock for the lathe. There's a pulley with a belt. I drew a cross section of this and all the parts on my blog again. Uh, what is spinning here is a piece of pipe. It's a chromoly pipe like you use in bicycle frame. There's two bearings in the headstock mounted here. A spring keeps these bearings in tension because they're designed for furniture and they need a uh, axial load on each side to preload them. So all this is really doing is just spinning this piece of pipe here in the center. Then when I want to mount work to it, I have this 5 8 inch bolt that goes to a, a flange fitting for a pipe, like a floor fitting, is screwed into two pieces of wood. The grain is at right angles to each other for strength and these are glued together permanently. So what I can do is put a piece of work on the end of this, screw through from the back to grab the work and hold it onto this, this wood disc. There's another piece of pipe slipped over the bolt here as a spacer with a hole drilled through with a pin. Uh, this whole thing is epoxied together, so it spins as one unit. This end can go into this pipe down through the middle. And you put a couple nuts on the back, jam that in in place. Once I've done that, then the motor turns the belt, spins the pulley, causes this plate to spin around, and the work pieces out here and I can uh, do all the turning I want on pretty much any shape that I want. That first part was good for spinning bowls and things with a, a large flat bottom that I can screw down to those pieces of wood, but if I want to spin something thinner uh, with a smaller diameter like a baseball bat, I use another bolt. It's a 5 8 inch, again, bolt. Fits snugly in this pipe. There's a nail put into a hole that's drilled in the end for centering. I can take this bolt, put it through, and then on this end, tighten down another nut, and then believe it or not, put on a piece of sheet metal, bent like that, like a U-shape, cut two notches in the wood, the nail centers it, and then grab it again with another jam nut. That lets me spin uh, smaller diameters, uh, longer, like, a, like I mentioned, a baseball bat or a long cylindrical piece where I don't have a lot of meat on the back of the piece to, to grab the part, like in a bowl. The reason I'm using 5 8 inch bolts is because 5 8 is actually the same size on most grinding discs and sanding discs that you get at the hardware store. So I can take out that bolt and take a sanding disc like you have on the end of a power tool mount it in there as well same kind of thing with a jam nut jam it tight against that pipe and then when the pulley spins the sanding disc spins and I have an adjustable table I can put out here I'll show in a minute so I can get different angles and do different sanding operations on this as well Once I have a sanding disc or grinding disc in there, I've got this uh, table I made, plywood, a 4x4, and a window crank. 
There's a piece of laminate on top to make the surface smooth. This bolts down to the bed, which I'll show in a minute. By turning the window crank, I can get different angles set up for different sanding angles or grinding angles. It's uh, probably not the safest thing in the world, but it works. And once I've set an angle, I usually clamp it with a C-clamp so it won't move. So if I'm going to turn a, a piece of work, here I have one mounted to the, the back of this plate that I showed earlier, the wood plate is something I've, my son's actually working on that he started. You take this piece, as I mentioned, drop it in the spindle, into the pipe, put the nuts on the back, tighten it down so it'll spin. Then I have a tool rest that I bring up. It sits on the bed with this bolt down here, goes through these two rails and clamps it in place. The spindle is another 5 8 inch bolt through a couple furniture bearings with a spring to hold the tension. It's exactly the same as the other end except there's no pulley on this end, obviously. Uh, once I've tightened that down, gotten all those bolts tight, then I can put on the tool rest, which is just 2x4s plain down. I put a slot through the middle so I can adjust the depth of the tool rest. That sits on there like that. And then underneath, I put another 2x4 with a hole in the middle, a big square flat washer, a round flat washer, and a nut. That comes up from underneath, tighten down this bolt, can set the tool rest where I want it, turn it on, and start turning the material. Details of this entire thing, including a cross section of the headstock, schematics showing how the speed controller works, uh, what's going on in there, uh, are all on my blog at Autobellin at Blogspot.